double replacement, both the reactants are ionic compounds. So they're two, they have to be soluble ionic compounds. So that's what your reactants are, and they switch partners. So here you have A plus B, C plus D. They're going to switch so that the A goes with the D, the B goes, the C goes with the B. And so they totally switch partners. In these, they're always aqueous. And the reason the reactants have to be aqueous is if they're not dissolved in water, the partners aren't freed up to switch. So when, a, when an ionic compound dissolves in water, the ions split apart and they're free to look for new partners. And so that's why they start out aqueous and then they can switch. So I left the products blank because I want to show you how you figure that out. Okay, so the, if you think about it, switching partners in this first reaction, silver is plus. That's your positive. So if it's going to leave the nitrate, would it go with the sodium that's plus or the chloride that's minus? Well, it only makes sense for it to go with the negative. The positive goes with the negative. So silver is going to go with the chloride. And so we're going to have Ag and Cl is one of our products. Now when we put it together, we have to balance the charge. So silver is plus, chloride is minus, we're good. We don't need subscripts. So that's one of our products. The next product, we're going to take the sodium, our other positive, and put it with either the silver that's plus or the nitrate that's minus. Well, the only thing that makes sense is put it with the minus. So we're going to put the Na with the NO3. Okay? And again, silver is, uh, sodium is plus, nitrate is minus, and so we don't need subscripts. It's good the way it is. So that's how we switch the partners. And another way to think about it, if you remember FOIL from math, it's the outer and the inner. It's just the middle part, that the outer two are going together, the inner two are going together. And that's how you make your new compounds. And you always have to balance the charges. Um, so that's the first step, is to switch the partners and balance the charges. Now, having those charges is not appropriate in a reaction. So I'm going to erase them once I'm done and have no charge on it because that's the point of the subscripts. The next thing, the way we know if there's a reaction or not is based on the solubility rules. And these are also on your periodic table. So let's take a minute and look at these soluble solubility rules. So the first column, and I write AQ on that. These are the ones that are soluble. So generally soluble, lithium, sodium, potassium, ammonium. If you have those in a compound, it's going to be soluble. Now that's the only rule we have with cations. The rest of them are about the anions. So those cations are always soluble. We have two anions that are always soluble, acetate and nitrate. So rule one, two, three, if any of those apply, it's soluble. The rest of the rules include some exceptions. So halides, that would be chloride, bromide, iodide. They just call it X as a general for the halide. They are soluble except for these three. Silver, mercury, and lead are not soluble. All the rest of the chlorides, bromides, iodides are soluble. Sulfate is another example where most of them are soluble. The exception, strontium sulfate, barium sulfate, lead sulfate, are insoluble. All the rest are soluble. So that's our aqueous side. The next side are the ones that are insoluble, or they'll be the solid. So carbonates are generally not soluble. They'll generally be a solid except for rule one. If you have lithium, sodium, potassium, ammonium, it's soluble. That is also true with chromate and phosphate. It's only rule one that is soluble. All the rest are insoluble. And then when you get to sulfide and hydroxide, they have the rule one exceptions, 
but they also have three more. Calcium, strontium, and barium as well are also insoluble. So these are the rules. You don't have to memorize them. They're on your periodic table. You'll always have them to look at. But when you do a double replacement reaction, the next step is to look at your two products and figure out if they are soluble or insoluble. So let's do that with the reaction we just did. So silver chloride. The rule, we're going to look for the chloride. And notice silver chloride is one of the exceptions. So this is solid. It's in the aqueous side, but it's an exception, so it's solid. And then sodium nitrate, well, that's rule one and rule three. Those are always soluble. So this piece is aqueous. And so we do have a reaction because we made a solid. If these had both been aqueous, we would have no reaction. So that's how it works. And since we have a reaction, now we should balance it. And so we look at one silver, one silver, one nitrate, one nitrate one sodium, one sodium, one chloride, one chloride. So it's balanced. And that's how we approach double replacement. So let's look at another example. And if you'd like to pause it here and try this next example on your own, that's a good idea. So what we're looking at in this one, we're going to put the K with the NO3. So we put K and NO3. We also have to consider the charge. K is plus, NO3 is minus. So we're good. We don't need any subscripts there. All right, so that's one of our products. The other, we're going to put the lead with the iodide. So we put PB with I. And look at their charges. Now you may think, well, we don't know lead's charge. It could have more than one possible charge. But whatever its charge is, it keeps the same charge. These are not redox. So we look over here, the lead is with two nitrates. So the lead has to be plus two in this case. So the lead is plus two. And the I, well, I is minus one. So that's not balanced. And so in order to make that a neutral compound, we need two on the I, PBI2. So that's our first step, is to identify our products. And now I'm going to erase those charges, because we don't want them hanging around in our balanced reaction. And now let's look at solubility. So solubility, uh, the first compound, it has a K in it. There's rule one. Potassium is always soluble. Also nitrate, always soluble. So this piece is aqueous. And then the PBI2, well, that's rule four. I is usually soluble, but PB, that's our exception. So this piece is solid. So we do have a precipitate, and that's what you'd see in these reactions. You'd see a solid forming. It will get cloudy. And so uh, let's go ahead and balance it. Um, there's already a two in front of KI, sorry, but imagine there wasn't. Um, the reason we need that is we have two iodines, so we need two there. That gives us two potassiums, and then we have two nitrates and one lead, so that's balanced. Here's those same examples just written out a little more cleanly so you can see those balanced reactions. When ionic compounds dissolve, their ions separate, and I talked about that. So it has to be soluble. Insoluble ionic compounds form a precipitate in water, and so what that means is they form a solid and it gets cloudy. If all the ion combinations form soluble compounds, then there's no reaction because you just had a mixture of ions and you have the same mixture of ions. So if there's nothing that's insoluble or solid, you don't get a reaction at all. So let's look at these examples here. If we have Na2, SO4, aqueous, plus Ba, Cl2, aqueous. 
okay? So let's start with switching the partners. We'll put the sodium with the chlorine. NaCl, okay? And then look at the charges. Na is plus, Cl is minus. So we're good. We don't need subscripts. And then we put the Ba with the SO4. Plus Ba, SO4. And we look at the charges. Ba is plus 2. SO4 is minus 2, so we don't need any subscripts there. All right, so I don't have the solubility rules on this slide, but look at your solubility rules. Um, NaCl, we got rule 1 going on. We got Na, so that's aqueous. BaSO4, we look at rule 5, sulfate is usually soluble, but barium is an exception. So this one is solid, okay? So let's go ahead and erase our charges. Don't need them anymore. And balance it, okay? So we have two sodiums here. So we need a two in front of this one. We have one sulfate, one sulfate, one barium, one barium, two chlorides, two chlorides. So that's balanced. So that's another example. Let's look at the next one. We have Na2SO4 plus CaCl2. And these are both aqueous. And when we switch the partners, we're going to put the Na with the Cl. And you may think, well, Na had a 2. Should I write Na2, Cl2? No, you don't bring the subscript over. The subscript is to balance it with its partner. So we, we look at its partner now. So I'm going to get rid of these. And we'll look at its current partner. So Na is plus, Cl is minus. They don't need subscripts. So they needed it on the reactant side. They don't need it on the product side. All right, the next compound, we have calcium going with sulfate. So CaSO4. And those charges, calcium is plus 2, sulfate is minus 2, so we don't need subscripts. All right, so now I'm going to erase those charges. Don't want them. And now let's check our solubility rules. So we look at sodium chloride, right? Rule one, that's aqueous. Okay, then we look at calcium sulfate. Well, sulfate, that's rule five. Calcium is not one of the exceptions. And so this one is also aqueous. So here's an example where both your reactants are aqueous, both your products are aqueous. That's no reaction. No reaction, because if you don't form a precipitate, nothing happens. You just mixed your ions. So here's the steps, and we've been doing this in all the examples. First, you identify the ions. You switch the partners. You check the solubility rules to see if there's a reaction, and then you write the reaction. So in this example, we're going to do something a little bit different, that the reactants are written out in words instead of in formulas. So it makes it a little harder. We have to first build the compounds and then look at the reaction. So write an equation for the reaction that occurs, if any, if solutions of sodium carbonate, so that's one of our reactants, and copper 2 chloride are mixed. Include the states. So we know the states of the reactants because it says solutions. That means aqueous. So let's build these compounds. Sodium is Na. Carbonate, CO3, and its charge is minus 2. Sodium's charge is plus 1. Those are not the same, so we need to cross them. The compound is Na2CO3 aqueous. So that's our first reactant. Our next one is copper 2 chloride. 
So copper, Cu, and its charge is plus 2. That's what that Roman numeral means. And then chloride, Cl, that's a negative. All right, again, not the same charge, so I'm going to cross them. It's Cu, Cl2, aqueous. Those are our reactants. Now, let's see what the products are. So here we switch the partners. We're going to put the Na with the Cl. And don't bring the twos. We're going to just put Na with Cl. Na is plus, Cl is minus, so we don't need subscripts. That's one of our products. The next one, Cu, CO3, plus Cu, CO3. Look at their charges. Cu is 2 plus, CO3, 2 minus. So we don't need subscripts on that either. So I'm going to erase the stuff we don't really need. We don't need the charges. We don't need these charges. We don't need these arrows. Get rid of that. All right. So there's our reaction. The next step is to check our solubility rules. And again, I don't have them on this slide, but look at your periodic table and check those solubility rules. So first of all, the first compound, Na, there's rule one. We've got sodium. This is aqueous. Anything with sodium is aqueous. And then Cu, CO3, the rule is going to be the anion. So the carbonate rule is rule number six. And those are all insoluble except the one, rule one, and copper is not one of those. So this is solid. So we do have a solid. We do have a reaction. And so our last step is to balance it. So over here we have two sodiums. So we need a two in front of NaCl. Um, then we have one carbonate. Our three got erased. That shouldn't have been erased. Um, so CO3, CO3. We have one copper, one copper, two chlorides, two chlorides. So now it's balanced and we've included the states. So that's how you do double replacement. And here's the steps written out, typed, so if you can't read any of that messy writing, there it is. Net ionic equations is another way to write double replacement reactions. And in the net ionic form, you include only the ions that change and leave out the spectator ions. And spectator ions remain ions throughout the reaction. So let's consider this reaction here. Um, the reactants are aqueous. And what that means is that go with black here, that they are aqueous, mean they are in ion form. So Ag plus plus NO3 minus, okay, split into ions. NaCl is also aqueous, so that gives us Na plus plus Cl minus. So the reactants are four separate ions, and they're all aqueous. Let's see if I can squeeze in aqueous here aqueous on each of these. Aq. All right, and then when we go to products, let's do it on our molecular format here. So the Ag is going with the Cl. We get Ag, Cl. And the Na is going with the NO3. All right, and the charge is all balanced because plus one minus one in both cases. And then when we check our solubility rules, the AgCl, that's our precipitate. So that's solid, and the NaNO3 is aqueous. So on our net ionic, we're going to do the same thing there, that if it's solid, though, it is not as ions. So we have AgCl solid. Solid is not as ions. But this one that's aqueous, Na plus, NO3 minus, put a plus between those. And these are both aqueous. So that's called the total ionic equation, showing every ion, NO3 is a minus. And now we can go to the net ionic equation by 
eliminating the ions that didn't do anything. So the spectator ions, the AG is not, because it started aqueous, it became part of a solid. The NO3, however, is still NO3. So we can cross it off and not include it. The sodium, Na+, plus, Na+, plus, it didn't change. It's a spectator ion. The Cl, however, was aqueous, and now it's part of a solid. So the net ionic equation looks like this, that we just had silver ions reacting with chloride ions to make silver chloride solid. And so that's just another way to show the net I to show this equation is called the net ionic format. Another way to think about it is just whatever piece is aqueous, those are the ions that you leave out. So in this case, the NO3 is aqueous, so it's the Na and the NO3 that we leave out. And you can see that they are not included in the net ionic reaction. Ionic compounds can be electrolyte solutions. So an electrolyte solution is a solution that contains ions and can conduct a current. So we can use the solubility rules to predict if a solution is going to be an electrolyte. So um, here's a picture of what that looks like. So an electrolyte test is a light bulb that just has two bare wires. And if you stick them in a solution, if the solution can conduct a current, the light bulb will turn on. If it can't, the light bulb won't turn on. And so in order to conduct a current, it needs to have ions in it. And so this solution was potassium iodide. It has ions, so it can conduct a current. So let's look at this list, ammonium carbonate. And all we have to do is check the solubility rules. Well, ammonium carbonate, that's soluble, so that's going to be AQ. AQ, I'm oh, sorry, I'm having a hard time writing that. Aqueous, that will be an electrolyte because it's soluble. Lead sulfate, okay, that's this exception right here. It's a solid, so it is not an electrolyte. Sodium chromate, well, here you got that sodium going on again. Sodiums are always soluble, so this one's going to be AQ. And AQ is an electrolyte. Then we have calcium sulfide. Well, the sulfide's over here, but you see the calcium is an exception. So it is aqueous. So that, yes, that is an electrolyte. And zinc hydroxide, here's our hydroxide rule. It's not one of the exceptions. So that makes it, remember, this is the insoluble side. So this is our solids. And so this is solid, which means it is not an electrolyte. So if it's soluble, it's an electrolyte. So you can see those. Everything that was insoluble is a non-electrolyte. Everything that's soluble is an electrolyte. Neutralization reactions are another kind of double replacement. So what we were looking at are precipitate double replacements. They, they make a solid. Another thing that can happen is that you make water. So instead of precipitate, we're going to make water. And another way to think of it is you have an acid and a base. So an acid is a compound that produces H plus ions, hydrogen ions. A base is a compound that produces hydroxide ions. And if you can imagine, if H and OH get together, well, that's water. That's H2O. And so that's a new compound, but it's not a precipitate. So look at this example. So we have HCl and NaOH. Well, this is our acid. Okay, and this is our base. So we have an acid and a base. It's going to work just like double replacement. The H is going to go with the OH, forming HOH or H2O, water. And then the Na is going with the Cl 
to make NaCl. And the same rules apply. We, apl we uh, balance the charges and then we balance the reaction. Um, and this is also a chemical reaction. You don't see a precipitate. You actually don't see anything at all. So we often use indicators so that you can see a neutralization reaction happening. But forming water is a new compound. Um, the product, acids and bases, your reactants, are very dangerous solutions. And the product is water and salt, so something you could actually drink. You wouldn't want to drink a lot of it. But you've really changed the properties of the solution completely, and so that is definitely a chemical reaction. Let's try this next example here. We have HBr, SROH. So hydrobromic acid and strontium hydroxide. So the H is going with the OH, and that makes water, H2O. Or you could write it HOH. You can write it either way. And the SR is going with the BR. So plus SR, BR. Now, I didn't show the charges. H is plus, OH is minus, so we just need one of each. Strontium is plus 2, bromide is minus 1. So in order to make that balance, we've got to do SRBR2. And those are our products, um, and now we need to balance it. The states, we'd put liquid for water, liquid. And this one, check your solubility rules. Usually the salt is aqueous. So in our last example, the salt was NaCl, which naturally you would call that salt. But salt is actually a broader term, and any ionic compound that's not an acid or a base is considered a salt. So the strontium bromide, in this case, is the salt. Uh, let's also balance it. Um, what I notice is I have two BRs, but only one BR here. So I'm going to put a 2 in front of the HBR. And uh, the SR balances, so let's check the hydrogens. I have 2 plus 2, so that's 4. So I'm going to need two waters. And then the oxygens, I've got two oxygens and two oxygens. So that's balance. And of course, I'd erase. Let's go ahead and do that. You don't want to leave the two. You don't want to put the arrows. And that's a little bit more clean.